Why, how and when should we add minerals in aquaponics? This is what we're going to see together in this video. Welcome in this video, we're going to talk about minerals in aquaponics. My name is Jonathan and I give you some free video to help you to build your own aquaponics system and to manage it in the best way possible. I offer you a free training from the description of this video, you're going to find a link also in the eye like information in the corner of the video. Uh, it's a free training to really give you a lot of information, a lot of knowledge to be able to basically produce some food in your own backyard uh, thanks to aquaponics that is sustainable healthy and tasty. So today we're going to see why we put minerals in our aquaponic system. So first I would like to compare the aquaponic system to a classic garden. In a classic garden uh, you got a lot of things happening. Obviously there is what you see, you got plants that are growing from the soil, but the soil is actually composed of a lot of organic matters that are in decomposition. They are breaking down thanks to some bacteria, fungus, insects, worms, a lot of life. It's a real ecosystem that you have in your soil, a normal soil. I'm not talking about the industrial agriculture that is relying on uh, fertilizers and uh, that I am completely against. So I'm talking about normal practice permaculture or what is happening in a classic forest. So now in a, in a normal forest or in a good garden you got a lot of activity but you got some worms and those worms they are growing, going around and they are breaking down all those organic matters and they release all the nutrients for the plant. So the plants to grow, they need a range of nutrients. Uh, first, they need nitrogen. So nitrogen uh, is, we, we base aquaponics, the aquaponics principle on the nitrogen cycle. You know, you basically have some fish food. This fish food is uh, transformed thanks to some bacteria into nitrate and the nitrate is absorbed by the plant that the basically fertilizer the nutrient of the plant natural completely natural and that's what is happening in a garden as well uh, any type of, uh, of an old leaf that is just dead on the on the, on the floor uh, is going to be transformed thanks to some insects and then worms and then some bacteria and fungus are going to break it down and release it available for the new plants that are growing so that's what we call the cycle of life, because every time you got something that is dying, it's going to be a source of food for the plants that are growing, the new plants. So it's fantastic and that's what we rely on in aquaponics. But the plants, they don't only need nitrogen, they need also phosphorus uh, and potassium and PK, that's the three uh, main nutrients that we all talk about in aquaponics, they are available in the soil, but you also got all the essential minerals that are very important for the plants. There are 12 that are well known and then there is a bunch of other, others that are around and the plant needs a very wide range of minerals, essential minerals uh, to live and to develop the best aroma, uh, the best crop basically. So in a soil uh, those minerals are available simply because the worms are going up and down in the soil, you know, they make some tunnels and they go very deep in the soil and there there is some rocks, there are some rocks, uh, big rocks and small rocks and smaller, smaller and basically they mix the soil. So they always bring rocks nearby the plants and that's where basically the bacteria and the fungus can transport those nutrients and those minerals. So you got a real network in the soil that is, oper that is just magic but that's what is happening and that's why we are talking about ecosystem, that's why having a good ecosystem is so important because when you got a good ecosystem basically you have all the nutrients that are available to all those um, links of the ecosystem. In aquaponics it's different because we are working without uh, access to the soil. We are working on a media where you got an ecosystem as well, but there are no rocks where that are breaking down and that are gonna release some minerals available for the plants. So at one point or another, if you grow food in aquaponics without adding minerals, you will probably find some deficiencies 
in uh, the plants that you are growing. So if you follow my recommendation, you have a large biodiversity and every single plant has got different needs. Uh, which is good because in average it means that uh, they're going to use all the nutrients that are available. Uh, but you need to make sure that you're going to offer those minerals. And if there is one deficiency in one mineral, you're going to find one typical species of plant that is going to start to have some yellow leaves. And then if you look at it uh, closely, you're going to find that it can be a deficiency in some minerals. So in this case, what I do, I add some minerals into my water. Uh, so then the frequency, the quantity is very hard to determine because it depends on the crop you're going to grow. Um, and also it's very difficult to balance uh, the quantity of minerals. You know, if you work in uh, hydroponics, uh, the solutions that you're going to put in your water are going to be perfectly adapted to the type of plant that you want to grow. So one solution per type of plant. In aquaponics is different, right? We are in a mixed uh, growth, mixed culture, where you got different types of plants. So what we want to have is uh, we want to make sure we got enough minerals in our aquaponic system to fulfill the needs of all the plants. But we don't want to adapt it specifically to one crop. So we know that there are some very, very complex reactions between the plants the bacteria and the fungus. Some people think that the plants are asking the fungus and the bacteria to work for them and to find the minerals that they need. So the reality is that you just need to have some minerals somewhere in the aquaponic system, in the water, and this relationship between bacteria, plants and fungus is going to bring them, bring them available to the plant. Now how to we bring those minerals in the aquaponic system. There are different ways. Uh, what I do is that I add rock dust in the aquaponic system. So rock dust is simply some uh, rocks that have been uh, grinded into powder. And when you add this powder in this aquaponic system, it releases all the different minerals in the water and available for the bacteria, fungus, plants, insects, whatever. So that's a really good way to do it now. The quantity required is very difficult to determine. You never know if you are putting too much or not enough. Uh, what I do is that I read, I look at the, the leaves of my plants. As soon as I see a plant with deficiency, I'm gonna add some minerals in the aquaponic system. And generally speaking, I add two milligrams per thousand liter of water. Uh, and then the frequency is that I'm not gonna add more and then some people add it every month, every two months. What I do is I, I just have a look at the, at, the, at the leaves. And if I see a deficiency in the leaves, I'm going to add it again a bit later. If I see that all the leaves are nice green, strong green, I'm not going to add any more. And sometimes I can go for months without adding any mineral in the aquaponic system. Now, there is a specificity on the iron, and I'm not going to develop this topic here because I already made some video about this and I will probably make others in the future, but I don't want to spend too much time in this specific video talking about iron. But you know that when you put iron in contact with water uh, and oxygen, and especially with specific pH, uh, you're going to have the iron that is going to be oxidized and transformed into rust. This is what happens in aquaponics when you put iron in the water and therefore it's not available for the plants anymore. So we use chelated iron. This is an iron that is encapsulated into another molecule. And this other molecule is basically protecting the iron. So it avoids it to turn into rust. So if you want to know more about it, again, I offer you a free video in the description of the video just below. You're going to find a link. You click on the link and then you will have access to a free training, a six steps training uh, to build your own aquaponic system and to manage it in the best condition. So I will give you a lot of free information uh, to really succeed at producing some sustainable, healthy and tasty food at home in your own backyard. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, you're going to receive one video every week, video like this one today. So it's a tip to help you to succeed at aquaponics. And I see you in the next video. Bye bye. Don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. 
You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop!